video, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and on this channel, I share teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for college instructors. Today, I want to talk about Padlet, which is an edtech tool that I've been experimenting with, and so I thought I'd share different ideas of how you can use it as an educator. So let's get started. So here's the dashboard of Padlet, and one thing to consider is that in the free version, you can only create three boards. Whereas with paid version, which is currently $10 a month, you can have unlimited boards. I have four boards here, but the bookmarks one actually comes with your profile. I've only actually made these three. Just something to keep in mind. Um, so, you know, in this case, since it's limited to only three, if you have the free version, you might want to consider maybe only using it for yourself or maybe only using it in specific ways with your students. So I wanted to give you three ideas of how you can use it. And I'm gonna start with the one of just keeping it for yourself. So here we have my brainstorming Padlet. So this is one idea of how you can use this particular tool. So maybe you have a lot of ideas you wanna brainstorm tied to a job search in your creative writing and your academic writing, your teaching, your you know research that you're doing, the service, right? That you can have tons of things that you wanna brainstorm about and maybe you wanna have them all in one place. But what's great about this particular board type in this board type called Canvas, you can actually connect different posts. So as you can see here, if I move this a little bit, right? I have these arrows tied between these three posts. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead and edit and say, you know, disconnect from a post. I don't want that tied there. I'm actually gonna move it to be over here instead because it has more to do with these ideas rather than the ones on the right, okay? Um, if you wanted to, you can say, okay, yes, I wanna edit this and I want to you know, disconnect that one as well. And now I'm going to connect this one to this post, and I'm gonna actually label it. I'm gonna label it, you know, do this week, okay? And then connect. And so now that arrow has a little label here, right? So this one's cool because you can create those connections. And so this one is the Canvas version. If you want to potentially just brainstorm ideas and then move them around depending on what they're connected to on your board. Keep in mind that the board isn't just the size of what you're seeing here. If I move this down, the board gets bigger, right? So keep that in mind. So that's one idea. And I'll show you how to create these boards in a second, but I wanted to show you the three different ideas first in case you are familiar with Padlet. So that's one option. And then the other two options are tied to teaching, of course, because this channel is about teaching. And so one option is what I'm calling keeping it real. And so in this case, this is not the canvas. This is a regular wall board type. And so as you can see, keeping it real, English 170 in current times. So maybe I'm teaching Charles at course and I want my students to post on the board Current events, right? Did you watch a TV show, the news, a TikTok, a YouTube video, Netflix, read a book, whatever the case may be, that you realize ties into our class? So maybe, for example, you know, mouse being banned recently, that would be something that you might want to discuss. So you might have here mouse banned, and then you know, here are my thoughts about this uh, decision, and here's potentially a link to an article about what's going on and you type it in here or you paste it and you post it. And now you have that on the board. And so students can just click on the top, bottom right here and they can say, oh, you know, I have this article that I downloaded that I think would be really helpful. I took this picture of this, you know, my niece reading this book and she loved it. Here's a link to a lot of things that you can do here. So maybe here's an image of this actress who they just announced is going to be in the YA book adaptation for the movie, right? So it's just ways of them to connect the real world to the course, for them to see that, hey, we're learning about Charles Lizette, and it's not just in this bubble of the classroom. You can connect it to what's happening outside of it as well. So that's one way of kind of curating real world events tied to your course. Could be one way of using Padlet with your students. Now, I suggest that when you're sharing these boards, you might have students who don't have Padlet accounts and they don't wanna get them. So I recommend doing the one that allows you to create a password for the board, right? So there's different options here. So you might do members only. You have to sign in in order to use it. But again, students might want, not want to do that. So if you have a password, 
if they have the link and they know the password, they can get in and they can write in this board. There are other options as well, maybe just secret. So if they have a link, they can write on it. There's no password needed. Um, anybody can write on it and it's in your profile or no one, right? So maybe your, your brainstorming board is private. No one can access it unless they are you. They're signed in as you. So I recommend the password for sharing with students. You can copy the link, you can have a QR code, you can embed it somewhere, you can email it. So there's plenty of ways of sharing it once you choose your privacy setting. So that's the second option. And then going back, a third option, so another way of doing it with your students, is potentially having here, so English 170 resources. So post academic articles or book titles that can help our fellow students with their papers. So in this case, I'm doing the shelf option. So this is a different type of board. And as you can see, you're creating sections on it and you actually add posts underneath the section. So journal articles, maybe they can link to articles that they found really helpful, books that they had seen the library that they found inf interesting information in, maybe a podcast by an educator or by someone who's an expert in the field and they feel it's a good resource. Add it here, right? And you can add more sections as well. So same thing where you add the plus sign and then you have your options of what you want to post. And as you can see, it appears in that section. So this is another option. Rather than having it about being about, you know, real life connections, you might just have, hey students, you know, why don't you go ahead and share resources that you're finding with your fellow students. So the second idea of how you can do it from the teacher perspective rather than just using it for your own use. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. Okay. Okay. And make a new one, right? Because you have three with the free version. And so here you can see the different options that you can do. So there's the wall one, right? So just posting it however you'd like. Streaming, I don't recommend because it involves a lot of scrolling because it's in a very linear form. The grid is just a bit more structured than the wall because it, it is arranged in rows. And the shelf I showed you has the names of the columns. The map is obviously much more specific depending on what you're using it for, as is the timeline. And then the canvas is the one I showed you where you can make the connections. So for example here, just to kind of show you, right? So here is creating a Padlet. So you decide on the name. So in this case, it's gonna be more structured. So maybe you're gonna have an assignment where students need to brainstorm a lot of ideas of potential topics to write about, let's say. So then this might be an idea generation board. And then the description here is post ideas for your papers. I'm not gonna add an icon, but you can if you want to. Or maybe I will add one. Okay, so go here, click right, that's fine, right? So there's the icon. You can change the wallpaper. So let's go ahead, choose that one. Ideas are growing. You can choose light or dark mode. You can choose the font. Attribution, will the author name appear above the post? Well, that will depend on if they're signed in or not. Will a new post appear first or last? I recommend first so it appears at the top. Comments, can viewers comment on post? I recommend yes so they can respond to each other's ideas. And then reactions is really great because you might have, you can like, right? You can vote on, oh yeah, I really like that idea and see which ideas get the most likes. And maybe you want to vote. You know, I don't recommend doing that idea, downvote. I recommend doing that idea, upvote. Stars, one through five. This idea is a three for me, it's a four for me, it's a one for me, right? Have students vote, star wise. And then grades if you wanna give scores. So you might have, you know what, let's go ahead and just do like, so people can say whether or not they think it's a really great idea. You can require approval for a comment, you can filter profanity if you want to, that's up to you. And you click next and the board is curated. And so again, you go bottom right here and you start adding what you want. And there are a lot of options for what can be included in your board. So that's just a really quick overview of how to use Padlet. So hope you found this helpful.